Hey folks, welcome to the second day of the Metadata and AI Summit. I'm Maggie Hayes, the founding community product manager of Data Hub and part of the founding team at Acral Data. Today, we are gonna kick things off with our monthly Data Hub Town Hall. So if you've joined a town hall in the past, you'll notice that this one is gonna look a little bit different. Today, we're gonna do an abridged version and take the time to kind of welcome folks and, and uh, get, get folks familiar with the Data Hub project and, and with Data Hub as a whole, since we have a lot of amazing new faces today. So without further ado, I will go ahead and kick things off. So if you've never heard of uh, Data Hub before, Data Hub is the uh, number one open source metadata platform focused on data discovery, data governance, and observability. It was open sourced about five years ago. And to date, we've had 569 co-contributors. If I'm being honest, this number is probably higher by now. Um, but those folks have joined or contributed from countries all over the world. It's been phenomenal uh, to see how many um, folks are lending their expertise and their experience to really make the, the, um, the open source project continue to thrive. Um, we are deployed across 3,000 plus uh, organizations across the world, and every single month we have 1.5 million or more PyPy downloads, um, which has designated the package as a critical project uh, from PyPy, which is pretty, pretty amazing. On the community side of things, we all come together in our Slack instance. Um, we have just surpassed our 12,000 uh, member mark. So it's been amazing to see that that community continue to grow and thrive. Um, if you're in Data Hub Slack, or if you're, if you, excuse me, if you've never been in Data Hub Slack, um, when you join us, you'll find more than a thousand people kind of interacting on a weekly basis. We're constantly sending each other messages, asking questions, troubleshooting, um, and really just learning from each other and connecting with another. We also have uh, 10 monthly events. So anything from our weekly office hours where you can bring your kind of technical troubleshooting questions to our core developers. We also have best practices sessions so we can help you get up and running. Um, and then of course, we'll have our monthly town halls um, as well as um, kind of meeting with thought leaders in the space. So plenty of opportunities to learn from each other and connect with one another. If you haven't joined the Data Hub community, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite places on the internet. So if you've never heard of Data Hub, or if you're just kind of new in your journey and, and starting to get familiar, um, we're gonna take the next few minutes to kind of walk you through what Data Hub is. Um, so that way you're kind of well-situated and well-positioned for the rest of the day where we'll have folks from the Data Hub community who are uh, sharing their stories, um, both with, you know, uh, both with leveraging metadata um, through Data Hub, but then also just their experiences in metadata and AI. So we'll contextualize Data Hub a little bit for you. So um, Data Hub, like I said, is the number one open source metadata platform for, uh, it's a unified approach to data discovery, data governance, and data observability. Those are three very buzzwordy things. So what does that actually look like in practice? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut over to a demo so we can walk through some examples for you live. All right, so we will kick things off by looking at how Data Hub supports data discovery. So Data Hub is a kind of centralized platform for discovery, observability, and governance for all of your assets within your data ecosystem. So that could be anything from data being created in production, that could be data um, being transformed or, or stored in a, a data warehouse, um, actually then leveraged in maybe feature tables and ML models or AI models, uh, maybe all the way out to a reporting layer. So really anywhere that data is created and or consumed, Data Hub is a great place to surface up that information. So on our homepage, when we're thinking about discovery, um, what we are aiming to do here is to present information to end users in a way that um, we're basically trying to minimize the amount of time that it takes for folks to find relevant and um, trustworthy data assets within their organization. So what you'll see here on our homepage is we'll kind of launch you into kind of our, anything that you've recently viewed so you can pick up your your um, your earlier journey for folks who are kind of exploring or implementing data mesh uh, principles. So uh, data domains and data products, et cetera. We have support for um, for that, those concepts as well. And then you can always jump in here based off of, you know, most popular, most viewed dashboards, most queried, et cetera. Um, and maybe you know the exact platform that your uh, data is stored in or your, your asset is stored in, you can jump into that. But let's use an example where I'm looking for, um, uh, I know that there's a, a data set that exists out there called account transactions, but I'm not sure what platform it's in. Um, and so we'll just hop into our, um, our unified browse experience. So we'll take a look at 
uh, will uh, search through account transactions. So what we'll enter into here is our main search and browse experience. So what you'll notice is that you have the ability to start to really filter and slice and dice your results um, by attribute. So maybe the platform that it's in, um, maybe it, uh, who owns it or who produces it, um, if it's in a domain, et cetera. The other thing is that you'll notice on the left-hand side, again, we're presenting a really unified browse experience across the entirety of your data platform. Um, and we'll present this information in a way that is kind of native to that hierarchy of those platforms. We're really trying to make it as intuitive and as native feeling for your end users as possible. Um, then, of course, you know, we'll have our search results down here in the middle. On the right hand side, as you're clicking through, you can start to see kind of a, a preview of what these resources are. So you'll see information around their popularity, top users, um, uh, volume of queries and users, et cetera. Of course, if we have documentation about it, um, then we start to uh, introduce um, or surface up information about lineage. So, how is this used upstream or downstream? Um, and a bunch more information. So as I'm going through this, um, I, you know, like I said, I'm looking for a data set called account transactions. Maybe I'm not sure what Kafka is. Um, and so maybe I actually just want to start in um, in BigQuery, which is a, a resource that I, you know, generally query within or, or uh, access data within. So now what we see in here, now that we're on our account transactions page, um, we'll start off with kind of our schema view. So you can kind of see the physical structure of your data asset um, along with it, the um, data type, and then kind of plain language definition if any of that exists. Um, we'll also surface up information around um, kind of usage or like whether or not an individual column has been, uh, how frequently it's been queried in the past. From there, you can start to dig deeper into the documentation. So what's kind of the plain language definition or, or kind of use case of, um, of this resource within your organization. Um, you can start to take a look at, you know, kind of popular queries, et cetera. And then again, you have all of your really robust um, Kind of summary view on the right hand side of which domains it, it relates to or um which uh kind of glossary terms so like which kind of governed um governed definitions is this resource associated with um one thing that is incredibly powerful is our ability to take a look at um at lineage from end to end. So when you're when you're ingesting uh, your assets into Data Hub, we do a really fantastic job of automatically detecting and extracting that lineage at uh, where it's generated. And so what you'll see here, for example, is this um, this big query data set called Account Transactions. Um, and let me just zoom in on this really quick. Um, this is actually generated off of uh, a Kafka topic. It has a, a couple of um, intermediate big query tables downstream. We now start to see that um, there's SageMaker um, feature tables downstream of this. The other part is that we we have native supporting for uh, version modeling. So in this example, we'd have a versioned um, SageMaker model as V1, V2, et cetera. And you can actually see how these models are down used downstream from there in production environments, whatever that environment might be in your use case. So for this for this example, this turns out to be um, a Databricks table that is fed off uh, version one of that of that uh, model. So you know when you're going through kind of like your your AI or ML development lifecycle, and your model will inevitably rapidly change. You can really uh, really succinctly identify the unique combinations or unique connections between versions of that model and then actual data outputs that are then maybe surfaced in um, user-facing app experiences or you know wherever wherever those are are kind of uh, public um, wherever those are then kind of uh, moved into production we'll show that full end-to-end -end, um, lineage relationship so this is a really fantastic way to um, help promote data discovery. So you have that kind of unified search experience where you can search across the entirety of your ecosystem. Um, you have your plain language, uh, combination of your technical and plain language kind of documentation for an asset. Um, you can then surface up information around top users, owners, et cetera, and really just provide a lot of those trust signals that um, your end users are gonna be looking for in order to know, is this relevant to me? Is this accurate? Is this something that I can trust? All right, now that we've talked a little bit about data discovery, let's take a look at how Data Hub supports uh, data observability. So I'm gonna take a look for a data set called Pet Profiles. 
And again, we'll kind of be in our, our unified search and browse experience. And I see right off the bat that, all right, pet profiles, this is the one that I've been looking for. That's fantastic. So again, you'll see a similar view here where it's kind of the physical and logical structure of, uh, or sorry, the physical structure of the schema along with kind of the, the human uh, interpretable uh, plain language definitions there. But now we're gonna take a, a look at our quality tab. So in Data Hub, when we're talking about observability, we break it down into kind of two areas. One is assertions. So it's basically saying, you know, kind of rules or monitors that you want to put on your data asset to make sure that they adhere to X, Y, Z criteria. This could be some proportion of, um, of null values. It could be uh, data SLA. So when is the data actually available and ready to go? Um, it could be saying that there's, you know, this this field can only contain these specific values, et cetera. Um, on the other side of that, we, th we think about um, assertions bubbling up into a data contract. So once you've established those assertions, we can go and say, in order for a, a data set to be under contract uh, or passing contract, it needs to meet five, six, you know, uh, these specific assertions on a regular basis. So when we're taking a look at assertions, um, I'll call out a couple of things in here. One, if you are already using a data quality tool or solutions such as Great Expectations, uh, maybe DBT tests, you can automatically publish those results within Data Hub. So you'll notice in this example for our prep, pet profiles data, um, we have Great Expectations results um, that were last run nine months ago, two years ago. So maybe they're a little bit out of date, but at a minimum, um, but, but all that is to say, if you already have that work done, we want to make sure that you're able to leverage it in the most kind of seamless way possible. So you can absolutely just publish those directly, those results directly to Data Hub when, um, when they're available. So whether you're running it on ad hoc basis or, you know, on a daily or hourly or whatever cadence that might be, we'll publish that in here so that your end users kind of, kind of see full, they have full visibility into those test outcomes. But so within these assertions, what you'll notice is that we have checks around, you know, kind of freshness, volume, column checks. So freshness, is it showing up as expected? Are we getting the volume of records that we would expect? Um, and then our columns kind of matching, um, matching specific expectations there. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I will call out that we have a combination of um, what, what we refer to as smart assertions. So we're basically just kind of monitoring and, and um, monitoring changes within your data, within that data set and automatically creating those assertions for you. Um, the other thing is that you can come in here and kind of create assertions as you see fit. Um, if your use cases change or if your kind of your monitoring needs change, you can always come in here and quickly stop or restart them. Um, and then you can also very easily come in and subscribe yourself or your team to those outcomes so that you'll get um, you'll get notifications directly in Slack or via email as things go awry. So this is uh so this is there's a lot more packed in here, but just wanted to kind of call out that you know data hub has both support for native generation and management of assertions um, in your observability journey. But if you're already going down that path, if you've already made some great progress, we can also surface up uh, those results as well. And then ultimately come in here and feed this into a data contract, which is um, where we would kind of show at a, a top level, is this meeting the, um, the subset of assertions that are critical for something to be kind of passing those contract uh, criteria. So let's talk about how uh, Data Hub helps you with data governance. So we'll stay in this pet profiles asset, and now we're in our governance tab. And what you'll see here is that what we um, what we support within uh, Data Hub Cloud is the ability to kind of create, automate, automated checks around the coverage of your metadata. So what does that mean? One example could be: um, Does every single data set in BigQuery, or does every single data set in Snowflake, for this example, does it have um, an appropriate classification assigned to it? So if you're going down kind of a GDPR, CCPA, or any other kind of compliance uh, heavy initiative, and you want to make sure that you're automatically monitoring that coverage of classification, this is a fantastic way to come in here. Um, and one, just kind of assert that that should happen, but then two, monitor that it's adhered to. Another example here would be 
making sure that your um, assets within a specific area are assigned to a domain. So for example, if you're trying to kind of rally your stakeholders around adopting data mesh, um, one thing you can do is make sure that anything, uh, any data asset in um, that's checked into Data Hub is assigned to a domain. That's really useful for kind of having that ongoing monitoring as your inevitably your data uh, ecosystem continually evolves and grows. There's always going to be more uh, data sets or, or assets created on a daily basis. So this is a really great way to make sure that you're uh, continually evolving or continually monitoring those, those credit criteria, so that you have really robust coverage of your classification, um, both on kind of like a, you know, on a compliance standpoint, but then also maybe around standardization of terms and, and definitions, et cetera. And the last thing I will call out, so this is, so the last thing I'll say here is that, you know, the, the governance kind of um, metadata tests approach here is really great for kind of setting those high level, more programmatic criteria where, you know, once a, once a, a dashboard is um, registered with Data Hub, it must have an owner, it must have, um, a privacy classification or, you know, kind of a Boolean of, or, or you know, it must um, show whether or not it has PII or it must have a, a stated deprecation date. Um, but the reality is that some of those things can be really difficult to find programmatically or assign programmatically. And sometimes you really do need a human in the loop. So one thing that we rolled out earlier this year are is the ability to kind of set documentation or annotation requirements and assign those out to um, relevant end users within your organization. So it could be that you want to make sure that, you know, from for a compliance use case or just for, you know, kind of a, a, a documentation coverage use case, um, you don't know exactly who the owners are of an asset, but you know that, you know, this person might have domain expertise and can kind of get us on the right track. This is a really powerful way to kind of set documentation criteria, have your end user basically assign and delegate out those tasks. So that for example, for this pet profiles, I'm now responsible for setting a uh, retention time. So I'll set this to 90 days. I will say that this is um, can be unrestricted and then we'll set a target deletion date for arbitrarily sometime next year. And I will also say that I am a steward of this. So now once I have um, answered all of these questions, I'm now prompted to verify these responses. And what this allows is for us to kind of signal to our compliance partners that, hey, this is, this is I stand behind the changes I've made, the edits I've made, um, and in our kind of like general tracking of our compliance coverage or documentation initiatives, we have a really highly auditable um, paper trail to make that happen. So I know that there's a lot packed in there, but really just wanted to demonstrate all the ways that Data Hub is really stitching together those experiences around data discovery, data observability, and data governance. Um, we're really only scratching the surface. We got to get moving into the day and into some um, into some, some exciting talks. Uh, but if, if folks have any questions or want to dig a little bit deeper on any of those use cases, uh, I highly encourage you reaching out. Um, you can reach out directly to me. We also have our weekly best practices session on Wednesday. Um, I'll be sure to uh, link that in the notes. And I hope you all have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful day too. I'm going to hand things over to Sashi and Karan from the uh, Deutsche Telekom team. They have an awesome adoption story to share with you about how they, um, how they've actually successfully rolled out Data Hub uh, within their organization and are really making some pretty big moves with, uh, with how they have their their data org up and running. So thank you for uh, your attention. I appreciate all of you. I will be available uh, to catch up and connect with anybody who's interested. And Sashin Karan, I'll hand it over to you.